Hey guys and welcome to another fun and easy machine learning tutorial on hierarchical clustering algorithm. Ah, oh, The Simpsons. Who doesn't love The Simpsons? Now there are a lot of Simpsons out there. So how do we go about clustering them up, assuming that we didn't know anything about them? Please subscribe and click the bell icon to join our notification squad. Let's take a look at the subset of Simpsons characters. How would we go about clustering these characters into groups or classes, for example? Well, we can use an algorithm called Hierarchical Clustering Analysis, or HCA. How this works is that each character is their own cluster using the agglomerative or bottom-up approach. More on this a bit later. So each character is their own cluster and we want to see how similar or distinct each character is from the other. In other words, we want to see the uniqueness of each cluster. We can use a number of features to determine the similarity, such as going into complex genetic code or just using simple distance or closeness to each other, or closeness to each cluster. So we can take our classes and create what we call a dendrogram or binary tree. So looking at Marge's twin sisters, Barry and Selma, they are quite similar to each other because they are twins. They share very similar genetic code and in conjunction they live together and they are quite close. So we'll join these two characters into one cluster. We draw a small vertical line to show a small dissimilarity between them. Next we look at Marge and Lisa. Because they are mother and daughter, they share a lot of genetic code, but not as much as the code of the twins. Lisa's genetic code shares some of her genes with Homer Simpson. So there would be a slightly greater dissimilarity between Lisa and Marge. So based on this, we can group Lisa and Marge into one cluster. The length of the trace is based on a dissimilarity, and therefore it is longer than Barry and Selma. Now we can look at the two clusters we have and try and merge them into one cluster again. We merge the Lisa and Marge cluster with the twins cluster, mainly because they are closer than they are to Edna Flounders. So now we join them into one cluster. And finally we join our mega cluster with Edna. And you can see how long the branches is because of this similarity. So looking at our dendrogram which shows how many clusters we have as well as the order that they were clustered. We can then determine the significant clusters when we draw a threshold right about here. And we can obtain about 3 clusters based on hierarchical clustering analysis. Of course we can adjust the threshold to suit our requirements. Okay, so let's apply what we've learned from the previous example to a scatter plot of data. We have 6 points in our data set. So that means that we have 6 clusters. Let's start off with B and C and group them as they are close to each other based on Euclidean distance. And this is our dissimilarity metric. You can use any other distance metric that you desire. Once we have B and C clustered, we can do the same for DE, which is more or less the same distance apart as B and C. Next step, we join the clusters DE with F to form DEF. Notice how long the branch is from the F node. And then we can do the same but with node BC and DEF to form another one. Another one. And then finally, we merge BCDEF with a much further cluster A. And now you can see from our dendrogram, we can choose our clusters as either 3 or 2 based on the threshold we place. Now while there are many ways to find the optimal threshold, a general practice would be for us to take the midpoint of the longest branch of our dendrogram and make that our threshold, thus leading to 3 classes. I hope all this is making sense on how hierarchical clustering works. So there are two main approaches with the HCA algorithm. They are agglomerative clustering, which is a bottom-up approach that we performed in our previous two examples. So starting with each item as its own cluster, we find the best pair to merge into a new cluster. And then we repeat until all clusters are fused together. And then there is the divisive clustering, which is a top-down approach. It is less popular than the agglomerative method. But with divisive, all observations start with one cluster and splits are performed recursively as one moves down the hierarchy. Now you get many variations of these approaches. You even get k-means divisive clustering, but we won't go too deep into that yet. Let's take a look at one more example. Another one. So here is a dataset of 7 data points or clusters in this case. 
P0 to P6. We start with the closest clusters P6 and P5. We use centroid linkage, which means that we use the Euclidean distance between the centroid of the two clusters. We'll discuss other linkage methods later on in this video. So those two clusters become one cluster, C1. So then we look for the next set of clusters that have the lowest Euclidean distance. In this case, we have P4 and C1. They join together to become C2. And this process is repeated for all the other clusters until there is only one cluster left. In the end, we can choose between two to five clusters based on what the data represents. Easy, right? Hierarchical clustering. Looking at the formal definition of hierarchical clustering, as the name suggests, is an algorithm that builds hierarchy of clusters. This algorithm starts with all the data points assigned to a cluster of their own. Then two nearest clusters are merged into the same cluster. In the end, the algorithm terminates only when there is a single cluster left. The result of the hierarchical clustering can be shown using a dendrogram, as we've seen before, which can be thought of as a binary tree. Looking at the difference between k-means and hierarchical clustering. Hierarchical clustering can't handle big data well, but k-means clustering can. This is because the time complexity of k-means is linear, while hierarchical clustering is quadratic. In k-means clustering, since we start with random choice of clusters, the results produced by running the algorithm multiple times might differ, while results are reproducible in hierarchical clustering. K-means is found to work well when the shape of the clusters is hyperspherical, like circle in 2D or sphere in 3D. K-means clustering requires prior knowledge of K, i.e. the number of clusters you want to divide your data into. However, with HCA, you can stop at whatever number of clusters you find appropriate in the hierarchical clustering by interpreting the dendrogram. Distance metrics. In a previous lecture of the series, we spoke about alternatives to the commonly used Euclidean distance, which are squared Euclidean distance, Manhattan or city block distance, maximum distance, and Mahala Nobis distance. Linkage. So the methods differ in respect to how they define proximity between any two clusters at every step. In the previous examples, we use the centroid of the clusters as our points to measure this similarity. So we have single linkage or nearest neighbor, where the proximity between two clusters is the proximity between the two closest objects. We have complete linkage or the farthest neighbor, and proximity between two clusters is the proximity between the two most distant objects. And then we have the centroid method, where the proximity between two clusters is the proximity between the geometric centroids, as we used in the previous examples. There are other linkage methods such as between group average linkage, simple average or method, equilibrious between group average linkage, within group average linkage, median or equilibrious centroid method, or also known as Ward's method, minimal increase of sum of squares, minimal sum of squares, minimal increase of variance, and minimal variance. Phew, sounds a lot. Why is this important? Well, as you can see from this image, if you select between either single linkage or complete linkage, for example, you end up with completely different sets of clusters. Applications of clustering. Clustering has a large number of applications spread across various domains. Some of the most popular applications of clustering are recommendation engines, market segmentation, social media analysis, search result grouping, medical imaging, image segmentation, and anomaly detection. So that is it from me. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Click that bell icon if you'd like to see more machine learning tutorials. And please don't forget to support us on Patreon, the link down below. If you'd like to download the script to this video, you can click the link down below to also download it for free. And stay tuned to our next lecture where we'll see how we can implement a hierarchical clustering algorithm in Python. Thank you for watching and see you in the next lecture.